And we're back here on Inside the Ropes, and we are joined by one of the most colourful personalities in WWE the last few years. Yeah. Formerly No Way Jose, it is Levis today. How are yeah. you, my man? I'm doing all right, man, over here chilling, representing Calhoun. What's up, baby? Great food if you're ever in that area. Uh, Massachusetts. Go ahead, check him out. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Before, you know, before we came on air... I had a lovely little uh, little glass of glass of vodka and diet coke, and you were not to be upstaged by me. You were like grabbing no. a little drink, so why not? I appreciate it. Yeah, little, little cheers to you, brother. Here we go. Hey, click. cheers. <laughs> uh, so it's a weird time. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, so obviously, you know, the releases came out last week. Yeah. Um, you know, let, let's just go there first. Let's get the the the, the downer stuff out of the way. You don't want to go. No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, yeah, because you, you were you were on Raw the other week. You were last week. You were you were facing Lashley in a match on Raw. You were still traveling. So yeah. talk me through. How do you find out? What's the conversation like? And were you expecting anything like this to happen? Because I know that there was kind of some word that maybe people might be getting released. Yeah, um, and if I miss something, let me uh, you know let me know because like I'll just start talking and and I go you know. So like just bring me back sometimes and then just be like you didn't answer this and I'll be like bro I was trying to avoid it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> um, but it was it was wild because like I got the the thing like because we were supposed to do tapings and then we decided to go live and I was like oh okay cool because I was supposed to fly on Saturday then the change happened and then I flew in Sunday um, and I thought like you know I was good to go I was like all right cool they need me they needed me for the two days I didn't know what the hell they needed me for and I was just like all right cool the, when you gotta go work I don't care the situation you, I mean I'm gonna go work. You know, so that made me feel a little bit at ease. The pandemic is going on and, and like it's thrashing through every country and like affecting everything. You know what I mean? So I was hoping I was actually a little positive be, or, you know, upbeat because I was like, OK, since we're going live, that probably saves us some money somehow. Right. So I was like, OK, well, we should be good to go. So I went in. Monday happened. Um, it was a weird environment. I think. The PC sort of prepped me for it because we did like a bunch of PC shows and stuff like that. And that's where like the character Jose came out of. And um, so, yeah, I didn't I didn't expect it at all. You know what I mean? I thought we were pretty much good to go. Um, I flew back on Tuesday. I was already thinking of more stuff because like with this thing, like I, I always just try to think, you know, ahead and and try to pitch as much as I can. And, uh most of the time, nothing ever happens, you know, but uh, uh, we wo I woke up Wednesday and uh, get this text from TR and they were like, you know, check the app. And I was like, wait, OK, they, they, they were very vague about a video and it was like we popped the video open and it's Vince and you're like, oh, shit, it's about to get real. So, I mean, just because he's never appeared in that form, you know, what I mean? so we're looking at the video. Yeah, or I'm looking at the video and like the words are just like, you know, cutbacks and uh, yeah, I forgot what they said in terms of talent. And I was just like, oh, man, like I, I couldn't like automatically start going, you know, how am I being utilized? Like, you know, am I bringing like our cuts going to be made because it wasn't clear that cuts were going to be made. Um, and so I start texting people left and right. Did you see this? What's going on? Nobody knew. And then the first reports of stuff came out. And, uh, you know, initially when a report comes out, it's like, okay, those are the cuts and that's it. But then, like, we're talking, we're talking about how bummed out we are that those people got released. And then 10 minutes later, two or three more names get added. And we're like, oh, shit. And then 15 minutes later, two more names get added. And we're like, whoa, like, they're just keep going. You know, it's, it's, it's continuous. And then I'm trying, to, I'm trying my damnedest to, you know, uh, keep going on with life, you know what I mean? Like, trying to get the workout in, I, I fucking, I go, I take my pre-workout, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get this work in, you know what I mean? Take it. As soon as I fucking take it, Carano hits me up, he's like, call me when you get a chance, and I'm like, <laughs> So I'm talking to him with an itchy forehead, because <laughs> the pre-workout's kicking in, and uh, the funny thing is, and I think uh, she posted it, Sasha, like, I'm texting her, because we were just texting about the whole situation. And then she was like, FaceTime, you know, one last hurrah. That's what we always say. And uh, we just 
do a shot of tequila. <laughs> and she took the picture, she posted it, so I could I'm comfortable talking about it. But uh, yeah, took that shot, you know, told a couple other people, fuck, like Corona just hit me up. And like they were like, Bro, I hope for the best. I, you know, he I answered the phone and I was like, you know, trying to make him pop, you know, a little little bit of charisma in order to change the decision, but it didn't work. <laughs> I was like, you call it because you love me, brother. And he was like, yeah, you know I love you, buddy, but you know, <laughs> you know why I'm calling. And I was like, yeah, I do. I can't even front. <laughs> but like, super cool about it. Like, you can tell it was it was tough for him to make all those calls. Or if, if you know, yeah, at least it, it appeared to be. So didn't see it coming, man. Blindsided the hell out of me. Uh, I was there Monday, like you said. Keep checking my phone's going off. I was there Monday, and then. Um, gone Wednesday morning, bro. Wow. And I mean, I guess initially when that happens, you're going to be gutted. You're going to be really disappointed in all the, the natural reactions that come out of it. Um, you know, and, and it's a weird situation, right? Because usually if there wasn't a pandemic on it, they're like, okay, I'm going to get my first booking ready. I'm going to like get myself out there. I'm going to yeah. you know, prove them. I'm going to prove to them. I want to be back there one day, all that kind of good stuff. But we're in a pandemic and there's no sort of at the moment no end in sight to that so how do you and your brain kind of deal with that part of it i think that was the hardest part because it's like the uncertainty of everything um you know you can't start rocking and rolling and that we discussed briefly before this like um the world basically knows me as this you know so it's like this character that is no way jose or was no way jose and like in a, in a sense, that's me, you know, but that's me turned up in a certain stage, you know, in in a day, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm having a good time. I'm turning it all the way up. Like, how many shots did I have today? Oh, there's Jose. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but I can turn that on when I go through the curtain. It doesn't matter how, like, chill or calm. And that's the thing. Like, I'm usually just real chill, quiet to myself and everything like that. And then when I go through, you have to you turn it on. And uh, um, it's tough because now I have to either try to go back into that or try to come up with something completely different and try to do it in a time where, like you said, everything's closed. As good as the character was for me, like in terms of making a living, Mm -hmm. I don't want to continue that character. You know, you heard it here first. I just feel like it did what it did. And if, you know, people want to book me for that or whatever, it's going to be you know, possibly one off or whatnot, but like, I have so much more, you know, to to show. I have, or at least I feel I do. You know, it's like I have a more serious side. I have an aggressive side. Well, I mean, let's talk about the elephant in the room: is the Adam sure. Rose coming? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Rose, who came before you, um, and there, you know, there are similarities to the entrance and stuff. Of course, yeah. Did did that make you feel more confident that well, you know, if they're doing it again, they must want to do it right this time? Did it make you apprehensive because this has similarly happened one time before and hasn't worked? Very, out? very apprehensive, very much so. Because when I did it in, um, if you see videos of me, first off, I wasn't trying to knock, and I never said this out loud. I was never, was never trying to knock Adam Rose because I was that. That's actually how I got. The job. I was a rosebud, um, and I just put my information, I think, online and on some talent thing that they had on their website. And uh, you know, six four, two hundred and fifty, you know, around the area, you know, you, they're gonna okay. Let's take a look at this kid. But yeah, like I, I never tried to knock the character. So what I what I did in in uh, or copy his character. What I did in NXT was. I think the first Brooklyn takeover is when we did the conga line. And I'm not sure whether the people came in. I think the people came in on the side and then we went around and then we just went out. It was something that simple. And then the second Brooklyn, when, you know, Sullivan, so when he hit me and, you know, all that stuff, I think we came out through the top, but I'm I'm not a hundred. I don't remember, but most of the time it was in the fans. So I would go into the crowd and, you know, ask people. I wouldn't touch nobody. I'd ask people to come up and, like, you know, we literally, you know, tens to hundreds of people would follow me around the damn thing 
and then I'd run into the ring and you know get people up and all that stuff. So that's what it was in NXT. So I wanted to kind of do that on the main, but they were very iffy about me going into the crowd, especially with that kind of fan interaction. Yeah. I get it. Um, <clears throat> so it wasn't my I like ideal situation because I felt like with Adam and myself, it just became about the the rosebuds or the conga line and stuff like that and you know then it's like you know until he got rid of them um but that's where the focus was and i just wanted to go out there and like in nxc i did my entrance on my own and i got the people up and all that stuff and if i wanted to party with them towards the end if you saw i jumped in and you know we partied together and that's what it was all about that's the whole zay character what I thought I created in NXT, and I thought it would transition over, but then it became this thing, and you know, it, it, it is what it is, bro. Like, and it, when you, you you get you you fill your stuff in, you're one of the rosebuds. So when you're creating No Way Jose, how much of that are you getting a say in? Who who's working with you to create it? Um, because at that point, I mean, that's 2015, right? 2015, I think it was. So yeah, you know, I think Jose was 2016. 2016. Yeah. So, but, I mean, so there's, and that's like peak NXT time, right? Because so yep. many people were, so many big characters were coming out of NXT at that point. So, <laughs> who was working with you? What was the process and sort of putting No Way Jose together? Well, if, initially it was just Levi Valenzuela going out there uh, and, and just partying with the people, you know, dancing and stuff like that. Like, you know, similar to uh, uh, Boogs going out there right now, you know, just getting with his air guitar or whatever, just getting yeah. the people up. You know, and um, then when we would do the promo classes, I'd usually be like something like very expressive out of nowhere, like either a ha ha or a shut up or something like that. Or, well, you know, like and I, I think they were watching something in film uh, one day and I wasn't in the class, but I wrestled somebody in that class. And uh, Sammy Callahan comes up to me and he was like, we were watching and you know, has a real raspy voice. And he was, Dude, we were watching. And like, what if you just like, no way, Jose. And I was like, ah, I like, as a catchphrase, I was like, oh, I could throw that in like in a promo or whatever. And like, he was so giddy about it that I was like, man, they were laughing about this shit for a long time. So like in my head, I was like, oh, they were laughing. They were, they were ribbing me or whatever. And then Bloom comes up to me and he was like, oh, 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 what do you think of no way, Jose? I was like, as a catchphrase, great. And, uh, then he was like, no, it's your name. And brother, I didn't like, I mean, like, no way, Jose. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> like if you think about it, it's going to, from a from an aspect, I was like, you know, it'll, it might pigeonhole me. It might, you know, there's a ceiling to that. Uh, I don't think a lot of people will take it serious. You know, I don't know how far we can go with it. Like, just trying to be realistic as possible. Like, I knew it would be a fun name for a time, but like, I was like, in the grand scheme of things, Will they put a championship on somebody named No Way Jose? Answer, no way. So it's like, <laughs> so in terms of that, it was like, all right. So that's how the name started. I kept being very, you know, I don't want the name. And then like, I just talked to somebody about it. I was like uh, walking into Full Sail and I was like, da, da, da. And there was a Triple H talking and uh, shook his hand. Hey, brother, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, well, not brother. Hey, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? And he was like, no way. What's going on? And I was like, in my head, I'd say, oh, shit. <laughs> and I, out loud, I was like, oh, is that a thing? And he goes, yeah, just got to prove this morning. What do you think? I said, hell yeah, love it. Let's go. <laughs> and I walked away. And in my head, I was like, damn. <laughs> I guess but, you can, uh, you kind of have to go with it, right? If that's yeah, the... You got you got to roll with it. First first time I heard the song, it wasn't my favorite either. Um, and I got a funny story about that with Dawkins because uh, it was just me and him in the house. And uh, But I, I'll get to that, you know, down the road. But he wasn't a fan of it either. Like, <laughs> basically, long story short, like after I popped huge because like it was just so different from what I thought it would be, you know. And I squint, squint, and squint, and, 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 and it's like, oh, shit, here we go. So, <laughs> so he looked at it. He was eating a bowl of cereal. Very, you know, Chef Dawkins eating his cereal. And he was like, uh, he looked, didn't even look up. He was like, bruh, 
if you use that, I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> I was like, I got no choice, bro. But in terms of the character, man, like, there was a, like, when Scotty came in, he was helping me a ton and trying to get that fan interaction and always that mindset of, you know, going to a different place, not expecting them to know you. You know what I mean? So, like, I had to go bust ass and, you know, every single time I went out there, whether I was being used or whether I wasn't being used, you know, so that's why I always had a ton of energy whenever I went out, and I made sure to have all that energy because I knew that it was my my role to, you know, bring the people up a little bit, um, yeah. or at least the best of my ability. And then with the other stuff, like it's just working with Joe Bel Castro down there, trying things on live events, working with all the great people down there. Riddick Moss, we had, you know, uh, <laughs> like a million matches down in NXT, and like we tried something different every time we went out there you know because we, we have with something like that you got to keep it fresh and you got to make sure to give especially the nxt crowd very vocal um they know what they like but at the same time they're very supportive mm -hmm. so like almost an immediate response like you know so it's like okay cool that worked that didn't work that worked that didn't work and then you just you just add sprinkle stuff along the way and i forget the first conga line i did <sighs> I figure where the heck it was, but I think there's actually a picture of it. Like, I went out and it might have been in like some Venice or Lake. I, I don't know. It was just like a town that was out of nowhere and like out in the middle of nowhere. And then we went out. I went out into the people and like one by one, I just started grabbing people. And oh wait, no, 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 no. It was in uh, Orlando, I think. I think it was Orlando, and it was actually people that I, I think there's some pictures in it. You know, like Montez was in it. Uh, <laughs> uh Ray Zar was in it like <laughs> like it was just a couple random people and then like you know some other people um I think Sarah Lee was in it she sent me a picture the other day I was like man was that the first one yeah it was just a bunch of people having fun and they were just you know that's how it started and then from there I went out into the people and then from there I went out into the audiences like it, when we traveled and stuff so yeah, it was just like a bunch of trial and error, man. And it was like the freedom. They gave me the freedom to try whatever I wanted, which was great. That was a great thing about NXT. And then the, the you know, head coach and then Bel Castro, who actually came to the PC often. Like, you know, you were able to talk to him and, and really try to fine tune, like, what he wanted and what you thought. And, like, he was great with working with me, man. Like, so that's how the whole character sort of, happened once i got to the to the to raw it was a little bit different because it was like you're with the conga line and it's like i don't want to be with the conga line every time i thought it should be a, i thought it should be a special occasion like it was you know like Brooklyn. a celebration yeah yeah like a celebration or something like that or if i really wanted to do it like i wanted my debut to be maybe conga line comes out people see there's a conga line i go out into the people we do that thing, you know, because yeah. if they wanted the conga line, shit, might as well do it, but with everybody to show that everybody's into it. Yeah, um, I think that would have been awesome. And then go in and do the little quick match and then just conga out, bro. But, you know, the, it, it worked out the way it did. And, you know, one, got two one, of the, <laughs> one, of the, one of the cool things when you were in NXT, I thought was the, the feud with Austin Aries that you had. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's kind of, you know, in the, the realm of wrestling – it's like there's a lot of people who say he's difficult and there's people who really like him. And like that's one of the times where he looked like he was having the most fun when he was like pretending to yeah. just dance with you. So like I remember kind of watching that going, there's something here because you, you could feel it. And, you know, you guys had your, your match at TakeOver. So what was it like working with Austin Aries and, you know, having like a proper program and moment where like people were going to remember it? Uh, it was I, – I knew – Aries and what he brought to the table, like in terms of like the wrestling and and like the name he had and everything. So I I thought it was awesome. I think he saw it from the room that he could possibly show something that he hasn't. And I think at the time I, I'm not sure if he was full on heel. I don't think so. Right, right before that. Yeah, I think he was like in in between. Yeah, in between. Right. So that was like his turn. So he he wanted something to really like boom and. It was fun working with him. I remember, you know, putting the match together for TakeOver, and he was very open to all my ideas. Like, you know, I, I, a lot of times we didn't, you know, not a lot of times, a few times we, you know, had different ideas of certain things, but we worked through everything. You know what I mean? Like, we're two different people. He had a lot more clout than I did, so he had his views, 
and I had my suggestions and like we came together and put together that match. And after that match, you know, we were talking about it. Um, and while we were talking about it, I think, uh, not, I think I know flair because somewhere in there, they didn't tell us that flair was going to come out, but like, I'm doing something and people just start wooing and me in my head, I'm like, hell yeah, they're doing it for me. <laughs> and then I look, I'm like, Oh shit. What are they <laughs> and then like, uh, <laughs> and then, he saw it too. That's why when he did the low pay, he just got up and woo because he saw it was right in front of Flair. And I was like, oh, no wonder you drove me all the way into the wall. <laughs> 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 uh, brother came in like a bullet, um, but had a lot of fun in that match, bro. Like I was able to do a little bit different. And I don't think a lot of people expected much out of me because of the character and the stuff that I was doing so far. So it was good to, to show a little bit. And I wish I could have like built more on that rather than coming out and just same seem like doing the same thing over and over and over again you know and it's like okay um i just remember after that match like i was saying uh flair was walking back and he just told us how much he enjoyed it and how how good he thought the match was and he gave us a little critique and it was like oh snap that was rick flair who told me that dude like it was awesome so like that was actually the only thing i really got to like sink my teeth into you know what i mean in terms of the character in my my four or five it was five years but with the character it was four so like and i I feel like i did okay and i wish i could have done more um Mm -hmm. in that aspect but um and when you're in nxt like what's the i mean because it it, from an outside perspective it feels like there's so many people in nxt there's so many people at the performance center and you're trying to you know there's there's five matches on a takeover there's like it's a very limited spot so i mean are you able to go to triple h and say hey here's an idea i've got is it something where you just kind of have to hope that a spot comes up for you like what's the kind of way that it worked in nxt when you were there um to try and kind of pitch ideas and progress things um there there would be a couple of people that we go in and and you could talk to all the time like i said one of the, the the head writer he was actually there and like i built up a good relationship with him and so like i was I was comfortable enough to go in there and talk. Uh, and I wish I had that confidence, you know, once I moved up, but I don't know why it disappeared. I have no damn clue why I wasn't as confident, um, you know, on the, on the call up, but like there, I was able to talk to, to the, to the writer or to triple H and, you know, and then when, you know, Shawn Michaels came in and was like, all right, cool. I can talk to all these people and try to figure out things that maybe I should show. And, you know, always always great things uh that they said back to me but that 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 i think was the difference because over there it felt like it was like triple h uh bel castro and then you know when Shawn michaels came in Shawn michaels and that's who we were dealing with you know once we moved up it's so many hoops you have to go through you know what i mean there's a lot of writers a lot of producers um and everything at the end of the day have to get cleared through one man and it's like you know, that's when it becomes, and, and it was my fault for not, I didn't create the relationship everybody tells you to create, you know, with the boss. And it's super easy to do. It's just in your head. If you get in your own head, like, that's what messes you up. And I just got in my own head way too bad, like, way too much, like, whenever I was going to do something. So what was the, you know, you're in NXT, you're doing your thing, and then the night after WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans, you debut on raw so what's the, when do you find that you're going to raw what's what is is there any sort of like pitch as to what's going to happen when you go up like what how take us through how that all happened for you it was actually kind of weird because i don't know if it happened to anybody else but i know with me uh we i i'm not on the takeover um uh, but i'm there because we did the the loop beforehand or maybe we got in there a few days early i'm not 100 percent sure um as you can see, my memory is fantastic. So, <laughs> so like, we're, we're watching and the main event's going on and it's it just finished up and, you know, Vince was actually there and then he's leaving. And then when he's leaving, um, I think Ricochet's there at the time and he shakes his hand, you know, you know, good match and everything like that. Then that somebody else and then it was me. And then he starts taking two steps and then he turns back around and leans into me and says, see you Monday. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and I was like, you know, so I was like, what the hell? And I think Kona was next to me. He was like, dude, did he tell you? I was like, bro, I'm trying not to think about it. And I, was like, I was like, I don't know. So then we do the 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 post uh, show, you know, like uh, meeting. And 
you know, after it, somebody tells, you know, me, the Iconics, AOP, and Drew to wait behind, and then we go into a room one by one or group by group, and it's Triple H, a cameraman, uh, Shawn Michaels, Bloom, and Amato, Sarah Amato, and uh, they tell us all individually that we're getting moved up. Um, and no plans or anything like that, but that was just, I think I was just like, let's go! Like, I just yelled. Because, <laughs> like, I was ready, bro. Like, I felt like I was ready. I know mentally, I, I don't know, um, but, like, I, I because I didn't show that I was. That's the thing. I was ready to go, but then when I was there, like, it was like, I was too shy, you know, too, I didn't have the confidence, you know what I mean? But I had the confidence, but I didn't, I was just like very, I guess, because I didn't know everybody and I was just like, all right, cool. I didn't want to step on the wrong toes, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was awesome getting like that moment um, and I was ready to go. And then, you know, Monday happened and they said, you know, the conga line thing. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, it was a big moment. And then afterwards, I guess it went so well that they just decided to let it stick. So and I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And then I figured out I was going to work something with Corbin. And, you know, the rest is what it is. Well, so, I mean, yeah, you, you, you start working with Baron Corbin, who um, is very, very funny um, on social media and stuff whenever he's biting back at fans and stuff um, and yeah. he gets a lot he gets a lot of shit sometimes for you know you know just his his character or all, all this type of sort of stuff what was it like working with with corbin and do you super, super cool i mean i think he was in a point where you know he just came off of smackdown and he was working with all the top guys at smackdown and so i i think you know he came in and um it was sort of like you put me with Jose, you know, who's just coming up and everything like that. So, I, you know, I, I might have been like in terms of his the mindset, like a demotion, you know what I mean? Like, but he's super cool to work with because the way he sees everything is he, he gets it. You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why so many people hate him. There's a reason why he'll tweet one thing and piss off the entire world. There's a reason why he won King of the <laughs> There's a reason why he worked Roman for so long. Like, he know he gets it, you know what I mean. So, it, it's and I remember in uh, NXT actually, he was the first TV guy that I worked at a live event, you know. And first thing he told me, just like when I moved up, it was like, all right, well, you know, what do you what do you feel like doing? And it's like, all right, cool. And then he works in terms of how to take, you know, just in terms of psychology and how to really, even if you don't have a lot, you know, or a lot of time, really like take something and tease it and piss people off at the same time in order to give it like he he just he gets it he's awesome he's very blunt and he'll tell you right now like he don't care if he hurts your damn feelings he's got a family to provide for and you know you gotta you gotta respect the damn thing somebody like that that's why i say he gets it because like the confidence that brother has is crazy and i should have learned more from that but it is why why do you think you know when you went up there you say that you know obviously you maybe didn't know people but is there anything else that you can point to as to why you don't think, like, like you know, if Vince said to you the, the weekend before, see you Monday, was, was did you not think, I'm going to go and speak to him the next week, I'm going to go and put, put myself in front of him? Like, what do you think stopped you from at least putting that relationship in with him that people always say that you should? Well, I, I just think it's like the, the whole aspect of, um, like, all the stories, I guess, got to my head, you know, like all the stories you hear about how this happened or that happened or how someone reacted this way or got fired because of this thing. And it's like, you know, you just, I, I let that all get into my head. And at the time I was like, man, I just, I'm happy. Basically I'm happy to be here. You know what I mean? I'm happy that I busted my ass to get here and now I'm here. And you know, my last year in NXT, it wasn't like my first year in NXT you know, where, like, there was, like, stories and I can build off of stuff and stuff like that. The last year was basically what I was doing on Raw, mm -hmm. where it was sort of, like, I didn't see myself on the same level as other people. And maybe it started off, like, with, you know, with the Corbin thing, with, like, you know, he didn't see me as the same level as other people. And realistically, yeah, like, all the work they've done, like, I can't still to this day, you know, they mm -hmm. put in so much. And, you know, it's like, I get it, you know, but, like, work with me brother you know it's 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm trying to get there my damn this with this damn thing that they just threw on me and told me to do 
you know. Yeah. But that, that's not to say I, I didn't go in and talk with the boss. Like, I talked with him a lot. and Well, not a lot. A, full, uh, a few times. And every time, it always seemed to go positive and made some good pitches. And he was very adamant about me turning on the conga line at one point in time. And I think he just wanted to see it. Like, And I think it's my fault for not showing him that I was ready to Because I was always, like, very gung-ho and, hell yeah, let's go. Because, like... That's my favorite part. When I was on the indies, for as brief as I was, it was only as a heel. Mm-hmm. And fighting before wrestling and everything like that, when I when I calmed down, I, I fought a lot. And I was very angry and everything. I, I went abroad and taught and then, like, sort of became at peace with myself, you know, internally. And I think that's where, like, it's a double-edged sword. Because now I don't explode on people. But at the same time, it's easy for me to just push it all back and inside and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, they, they don't see it. Physic, I mean, like visually, when I walk to somebody, I'm like, "Hey guys, how you doing?" They don't see a fighter, you know what I mean? But yeah. I know, I know that I am. So whenever he, we talked about doing that, like I think it was like three or four times. Like I was like, "Let's fucking go! I'm ready. Pull the trigger. Let's go!" And it just never happened, you know. So, and do you think we, you know, when you're in there, whether it's Vince or MDL, else, like, is there any? You know, for people who are watching this who were like, you know, we like No Way Jose, but what what more was there there? Was there any pitch that you had that you remember that you thought, apart from turning on the conga line, but is there anything else you wanted to do that you thought, if we'd done this, it would have been sick? I, I think with, with where I saw it happening and then, like, you know, I was like, you know what? Like, if if I'm here for this, then let me be here for this. You know, let me entertain people. So one of the first things I pitched was actually with Elias. Uh, my first year, I kept pitching, you know, to try to walk with Elias, like be a groupie um, and like go out there and, you know, try to play the guitar, you know, one week go out with the conga drums, you know, have somebody in the, in like everybody in the conga line do something different in order to like keep interrupting him, piss him off. Maybe we can build something there. And then he turns on me. There, It was like very intricate. I had like, six to seven weeks plan of this damn thing. Um, and then, uh, no, that didn't happen. And uh, at one point I had a, a prominent athlete ready to go for WrestleMania. I reached out and I was like, look, bro, like and he was, he was on board and that didn't happen, uh, which bummed out, bummed me out. Cause I thought that was like a, a sure thing. Um, let's see what else. And just I remember one week and I talked to somebody else about it. There was one raw where I was just like, you know what? Like I just got to because I felt like I wasn't being heard. And, you know, for one reason or another, um, I, I, I did 13 pitches by Wednesday, I think. So we got home Tuesday and on Wednesday I sent in 13 pitches and I didn't even get a reply back. <laughs> so it was like. You know, when I'm fighting that damn hard, bro, it's it's kind of demoralizing when you're like, yo, I'm work, I'm working hard to try to like be something else. You know, I'm I'm talking to people, trying to be something else, um, trying to be more. You know, that's uh, one of the last conversations I had. Well, I talked with man, a lot of people. Um, I remember Cena. I talked to Cena. One of the questions he asked, which made me start thinking about like this in a different thing. He was like, "Why do you dance?" Something so simple. And when I tell you I couldn't answer him, I was like, wow, like, <laughs> I got to rethink this. Like, it was so simple that it just blew, like, it went way past me. And I think I gave him an answer and he was like, I don't see it. And I was like, it's it's because I haven't shown it. Like, he was 100% right. And then he gave me a bunch of advice. I remember talking uh, to Austin and I was like, you know gave me his time and he was just he told me some great stuff too and I was like that's when I was just like man I really gotta like start coming up with stuff because I wanted to show that side of me turned up you know to 10 as he said and it was just I tried to pitch more things and it was like you had these great people trying to help me and trying to you know help me with my mindset and trying to help me move forward and then it, nothing ever nothing ever happened bro so I just feel like I had um if 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 it so once I figured out that in the entertainment aspect, I couldn't do anything. And then in the reality aspect, I couldn't do anything. And I just felt like at that point, it was like, damn, like, they only see me as one thing, you know. And yeah. I remember the last convert or, you know, I talk with Drew all the time, Drew McIntyre. 
holla at your boy, you tra- let's go. Uh, so <laughs> um, I talked to my last loop, uh, Seth, and I asked him straight up, like, what do I have to do in order to be, you know, looked upon more, in order to be a bigger part of this company, you know, in order to, to, to bring more to the show, like straight up. Like, and that was the first time I asked him and like gave me some great advice as well. It's like, you know, I was trying, I was trying. It's not like I was there like collecting a paycheck, you know, and that's what my people might, might think. And, you know, it's, uh, we get, we, everybody gets there because they're a dreamer and they're a hustler and they're a worker. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, roadblocks happen all the damn time. We got there though, you know? So I just saw it as eventually I'm going to keep throwing this stuff out there. Eventually when it's my time, it's going to be my time because I just felt like if I just kept being, keeping my note, you know, head down and keep going forward and doing everything they asked of me to the best of my ability, but at the same time kept pitching and showing that I wasn't content with what was going on, I thought it was gonna end up working out. And who knows, it might have, but the pandemic hit, bro. And I yeah. just feel like every time I talked to, to the boss and it went well, it went well. Like, you know, people always told me that he liked me and liked what I did. And I was like, cool. You know, I, you know, it might have been a line, who knows, but <laughs> a line, not a <laughs> lie. Uh, <laughs> um, it's just, but uh, this thing hit and he had to make a lot of tough decisions, bro. And I, I would hate to be in his shoes, you know, uh, I think uh, Shane Helms talked about it. Like he had to make a lot of business decisions, man. And it's not like he's there. I, I feel like he didn't like it. And I heard from, you know, when I was talking to Carano, it wasn't fun for him. You know, he didn't call people wanting to say, hey, your life is about to change like crazy. Like, you know, it, it was it, it is what it is. The pandemic is affecting everybody and whatever plans or pitches or whatever ideas they had, everything changed, bro. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned Drew, and you know when Drew, Drew, Drew yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when uh, when Drew was in, uh, you know, can I remember? I remember going to WrestleMania in like 2010, WrestleMania 26, and there was a lot of chat that weekend on the online and stuff that Drew McIntyre, 23 or 24, was going to win Money in the Bank at WrestleMania, and he and he didn't win it, and you know by 2014 he's in 3MB, and then he got released and it was like one of those like Drew got released like online people were just going crazy so I wonder like you know you know Drew you're friends with Drew is there a part of you that's kind of like I'm going to be a Drew I'm going to go out and I'm going to create my thing and I'm going to I'm going to do what he did and I'm going to come back rather than be a sort of a you know go and do a convention and be signing the former WWE guy that's why that's why I say I don't want to continue to be No Way Jose and because like you know, he hit me up, Jinder hit me up, and, like, now you got Heath as well on the grind, too. It's like you were put in a specific role for, um, you know, for what it was, and that's how you were painted out to be. So for people to expect that from you, it's kind of like, okay, you get it, but at the same time, that's not what I want to be. So when Drew left and I ask him, and I'm trying to talk to him, and he's trying to, you know, point me in the right direction, and, you know, like, what did he do in order to reinvent himself? And um, that's what I want to do, bro. Like, I want to come back and I want to be somebody that they're like, okay, you know, we might have miss, missed something with him. Let's bring him back and show that and showcase that. You know what I mean? And that that's the mindset I have. Like, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I was down, bro. I, I went through, I looked up the steps of failure and <laughs> I think I went through them all and I'm trying to do the last one, which is like change or something like that. And uh, I, yeah, some days still hurt because it just, it's not even a week out since we're doing this interview. It's what mm-hmm. Tuesday or whatever, but I'm, I'm trying to push forward as best I can, you know, and I, I want to come back and I want, like I asked Seth, I want to be a bigger part of this company. Like that's, that's ideally the goal and that's my mindset. I'm not going to go and, and just be Jose because it's easy. You know, I yeah. want to it. I want to work again to get where I want to be. You know, like it's it's a blessing in disguise, I think, because I feel like with all the pitches and everything that I was doing there, there was I, I probably met that ceiling, you know, Boop, I can't get it. Boop. <laughs> that was great. Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> But like you know, 
I, I just feel like it was there and they, they probably, it was probably seen like, all right, this is all I can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And I just want to show that, no, that ain't all I can bring to the table. And if you see me back in WWE, just know that I'm happy as hell because I fucking made them put eyes back on me, you know? And if it never happens, I want to be sure to go wherever I go, however ever many places I go, and whoever I wrestle, like, I want to make sure that they're like, damn, bro, like, that's what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? I love this shit, you know? This is what we, this is what we do, baby. Like, this is what I wanted to do. Um, and you're, you're a lifer. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking just drop everything and like you said just you know convention and if people do that that is perfectly fine i got I, no knock in anybody's hustle you know what i mean but you know i i'm 31 and it's just like i want to keep rolling you know what i mean i want to keep you starting to feel the fire now are you starting to feel that kind of you know that once things get back to you know people can gather somewhere again I, like- I, I've, I've never lost the fire i've been down And then, like, one random thing or two. You know what actually helped me? Which is going to sound super fucking weird. Um, But K-pop actually helped me again. BTS or whatever. Uh, It's something that I got really into. But just, like, the message they deliver. First of all, music's catchy as hell. But, like, it's, like, about loving yourself. And at times, like, bro, along this thing, it was, like, it was hard for me to love me, you know? Uh, Because... I started seeing myself as I was being portrayed, you know, just like, and I felt kind of down. It it was like kind of being worthless, you know what I mean? Like, what's the value in me right now? You know, and it's, it's, it, it sucked to feel that way, especially when you're in the, you know, in the position I'm in, but it's like when you're trying your damnness and it feels like you're not being heard, it's like, what else do I have to do? So like they, they helped me and you know, whenever I heard certain songs or saw a performance or something like that, or like bro, it just made me like sort of forget things, accept things, and try to move forward. You know what I mean? And that's when more pitches came out. That's when more ideas came out. So it would be like the fire was going out. Somebody threw another log on that damn thing. It was like, hey baby, let's go. And then the shit was going down again. Hey baby, let's go. So it was like it never really went away. And I think right now it's in that little downspurt because even though I'm driven, I'm motivated, I got let go. So it still hurts, Mm -hmm. but it's like I've never understood the chip on the shoulder thing. Never Um, really understood that Uh, because I did play sports, but I played sports in high school and that was it. You know, Um, then I taught abroad. I was a teacher. I was having fun. (laughs) So I didn't really have a chip on the shoulder. so like when you hear like a Brady or who else got, oh man, there's so many stories, but the, the one that just comes to mind is Tom Brady, how he said in an interview a few days ago, how he still remembers the, all the teams that passed up on him, you know what I mean? And it's like, damn, you're like, you've won that many Super Bowls, that many titles, probably the best quarterback in American football. Ha! You like what I did there? Uh, Impressive. The best, best quarterback in American football ever, you know? And it's just like, he still has that. And that's what keeps him moving. And it's like, man, maybe I can have that mindset. And so I think even though it's like a weird in-between time, I got to use that and I got to keep going. Because I know I was, I was underutilized. Everybody knows if they were let go, that were underutilized because we're there for a fucking reason, you know. Mm-hmm. I talked to Cesaro one time with man, bro. And let me talk about this real quick. <laughs> we had a, a random live event match that I was nervous as hell for. Uh, because I get there and the night before, I think I forget who I worked, but it was like a match that I've done, you know, with somebody I worked a million times. Mm-hmm. And then I get to the show in Syracuse and there's more people there. So I'm like, oh, okay, I figure I'm about to be in like an eight man or something like that. Cause Let's just be real. That's what I do. (laughs) And then I go and it was like Cesaro, no way, Jose. And I was like, I was fired up. I was like, yeah. And then somebody was, oh, it might change. And so then it was like that not knowing thing. Then I got nervous. (laughs) And then it stuck. Man, we went out there 15, 20 minutes and just had a blast. And I was doing shit that I've not done in a while. And afterwards, like, I just thanked them. And that's one of the moments where that fire was 
lit. I remember calling my family and I was like, yo, I remember why I love this shit. Like, this is it. Like, Cesaro was super cool about it. Like, he was giving me so much advice afterwards, like, um, how to, like, build on everything and, and make more sense of stuff. And, like, yo, we had a blast. And then after that, it was just, like, I got booked less and less for, for shorter and shorter amounts of time. And I was like, damn. That's, <laughs> that sucks. So it's like, you know, stuff like that. Like, I know in certain points that I can I can go and when called upon. But after that, that's the point of that. Sorry. Started rambling because I forgot. <laughs> after that, he was like, you're here because you're one of the best in the world. They know you're one of the best in the world. Never forget that. And like... You know, that's something that, you know, stuck with me and still sticks with me. Like, it, it, and that's what helped me. And he, I don't know if he knows. And Zaro, if you didn't know, you know now. Um, but, like, just those words sort of makes you, you know, just remind yourself, and he had to do it for me, of why the hell you're here. You know what I mean? Through all the, all the bullshit and whatnot, like, you're here for a reason, you know, because you're good. And so when I was able to do that with him, like, it was like, cool. And that's what I want to get back to where we just went out there and had a damn good time and tried things and did things. And that was the first and only time we've ever wrestled. Oh, no, 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 not only time because we did some like, really short stuff on Raw. But, like, that was the first time we ever wrestled. And it was like, yeah, cool. And I, I just can't wait to get back to that feeling again. I, I mean, I, I sense from this conversation that that's a shoe in. Yeah. Get back to that. It's, um... You know? And you've I, even got I, rid of the fro. Like, the fro's gone. You mean business. Yeah, the, fro, the fro's not shaving off, but damn near close, dog. I was like, <laughs> I, promised, uh, I promised one of my buddies I'll give him a call if, if I ever decide to cut it. But I, I think, you know, the beard I did for quarantine and just to pop myself. <laughs> but then I, and then with the, with the hair like this, it looks better, you know, shorter. But then I put the hair back out right before I went out, and I was like, yo, my hair is long as hell. So, <laughs> so I don't look right. So I'm going to keep it as low as I can for now. But yeah, it's just, I mean business, bro. Like, I wasn't able to show, like, fight. Like, there wasn't a time where they were like, you know, just go out there. Don't fucking care about dancing. Don't care about any of that. Just go out there and fucking whoop some ass. No one ever told me, you know. I always had to go out there and do my entrance. I always had to go out there and dance and giggle. And then I always had to like turn it off. And it was like, it was, it was, it was something that didn't feel genuine for me because it's like real life, real life. Let's talk real, real quick. If you get beat up, ridiculed, jumped, all that stuff every week, brother, you're going to feel some type of way. Yeah. You know, you're not going to go out there and laughy, giddy, joke and all that stuff. And I think that's something that we missed because uh, if it wasn't with the conga line because they constantly got in the way and either caused a cutoff or something like that or a loss or whatnot or a distraction, you know, if it wasn't turning on them, it was like people coming out there and picking on me, not taking me serious, you know what I mean? That was, oh, that's one of the things. Um, I wanted to knock on Alistair's door. And if you uh, online, I tried to, you know, do that and, like, post myself outside of his door. And I just wanted to do it because... I wanted that to show or help show a different side of me, you know, like he didn't knock on or I knocked on his door. He didn't answer because he respected. I mean, he didn't respect me and I don't want to knock on his door. I need to knock on his door because I've been ridiculed and disrespected by everybody in the back. You know, they don't take me serious and it's my time to show what the hell they brought me here for. You know, they don't know anything about my life, all this bullshit. I could have gone into all that stuff. I'm gonna knock on the door till my knuckles bleed. You know, because I want to fight with the devil. Some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, off the top of my head. But it's like, that's what I, I just wanted that thing, that that moment in order to show people, like, you know, there's there's a different side. And I think if we would have touched on that a little bit, that there could be two different parts of this character that would have been cool. But, you know, it didn't happen. So I think that's why I want to do now. I just want to go out there and I want to fight. Like, I could be happy, you know, how how Asuka's doing now. She'll do a little thing and then gets to, gets to work. But her little dance thing isn't her whole shit, mm -hmm. you know. Like, my dance thing is my whole shit. And if they expect it every time, even when I'm angry, for me, there's the disconnect right there. And I've, I've always had that because, like, like I said, real life, 
Real life. I'm going to ask you. You're outside. You're at a club. You chilling. You're having a damn good time. Hell yeah, baby. Another drink for me. Let's go. All right. Someone pushes you. Oh, okay. But you're with 10 people. Any of those people going to stand behind you and try to fight? You're damn right. Why? Because that's real life. And I think that was the thing where it was like, if... There's 12 people. I think at one point I had 17 people in my damn conga line. And it wasn't like, all right, how can we do like a, a different thing for it to be a different aspect of the conga line? Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, all right, how can we beat up these 17 people in the most creative way to make that person look like a monster? You know what I mean? And it's like, I get that. I get that was the role. Fine. It's a, it's a damn performance. We're paid to do stuff. Like, I get it. A show on TV, <laughs> like, you know, I respect the hell out of it, and uh, you know, it's I, I know it's business, you know, but it's like at the same time, if it's like all seventeen people are cowering, cowering away, um, then it's like, what the hell are we doing? So before before we go and give us give us your plugs and stuff, um, let's talk about the conga line one last time because I know that they were a big part of the No Way Jose thing. Um, and you mentioned that you you did want to have them around. It's just not yeah. every single match. Do you think that, I mean, how do you kind of feel about it now? Do you have fond memories for the conga line? Yeah, I mean, like, when I went out there as a rosebud, it was like sort of like that mentality where it was like, oh, it's my big break. You know what I mean? Like, it was my first time in front of a crowd that big. So, like, I remember still standing there and looking out, and I was like, damn, there's a lot of people. Like, this is cool. So every time I went up there, like, every time I had people in the conga line, even if it was a rough day for me mentally or whatever, I tried to make sure to, like, giddy up and go and get them up and get them, like, let's do it, let's go. Because I was like, it's our job to bring these people up. I was like, it's our job to bring energy. We're going to be the first thing they see, because usually it was main event. Uh, I was like, we're going to be the first thing, so we have to, like, just fucking give it to them. You know what I mean? So they were, I appreciate them, because I told them 100%. I was like, if you're not blown up by the end of it, you're doing it wrong, because I'm going to be blown up, and then I'm going to have to wrestle, right? So it's like... (laughs) And so, like, they, every time they went out there, like, even if I was, like, a little, because sometimes people try to go up in straight up gear, and I was like, bro, it's not about you, it's about this thing, you know, <laughs> like, and they were, like, understanding and everything, and everybody gave it their all, and uh, I remember I put, like, a, you know, a thank you to the Congo line, because honestly, like, it, it, it meant, you know, they were, they were, they were part of my act, you know, and it's like, without them, like, you know, it wouldn't have, you know, it wouldn't be what it was. And even though it was all about them towards the end, like, you know, how can somebody hide in the conga line? How can somebody pop out of the conga line and blah, 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 or get into the conga line? Or how do we throw, like, it was like, all right, that just kept creatively, like, all right, they were willing to do everything, you know, to help out the show as well, you know? And it's, I just want to thank anybody who's ever been in the conga line, you know, and all the, all the positive messages that, that I got afterwards because like it, you know, a lot of people really appreciated doing it and being in it and uh, having fun with it. And I just like everybody in it, bro, just thank you. And, you know, uh, hopefully some of y'all got looked at, you know, if not, you know, just keep on working. Cause you probably gonna see me soon too. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who want to like get in touch with you, they want to keep, you know, keep an eye on what you're doing. Like, what are the what are the plugs? Uh, well, for now, I still have the same uh, the stuff. So Twitter, I think it's WWE No Way Jose. Let me double check. <laughs> they, uh, I had to get one one way, the other the other way. Uh, nope, wrong one. Ooh, hey, here we go. Hey, yep. Twitter is WWE No Way Jose. Uh, Instagram is No Way Jose WWE. Um, you can book me on Cameo, and I'll dance for you. I'll sing for you. You want me to give bad news? You want a breakup? You want a divorce? Holla at your boy. I'll make it positive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing... Uh, uh, what, what else? What else did I have on here? Um, you book an email? You got an email if people want to book you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, that's the other one. There it is. It's just book levis. That's B-O-O-K-L-E-V-I-S at gmail.com. And uh, whatever you want me to do, you know, uh, let me know because your brother got time on his hands. Um, so, yeah, that's it.